this session we are going to see about the, the capacitance. So this is the, the capacitor so which consists of the, the two parallel plate in which one plate charged with the uh, positive and another plate charged with the, the negative. So once we are applying the potential V, uh, it has been induced by the EMF. So uh, it has been displaced by the, the uh, distance of D and it have the, the parametric coefficient of epsilon. So what is the, the uh, definition of the, the capacitance? The capacitance is the uh, electric device which consists of the con conductor separated by the, the dielectric medium. So the dielectric medium may be any material. So based on the material, the epsilon or value will change. So once we know about the, the dielectric material, we can know about what is the value of the, the epsilon R. So consider the, the parallel plate capacitor composed of the, the conducting plate which having the area of this dimension. So if suppose I am telling a displacement of D, then cross sectional area will be defined by a letter A. So which has been separated by the, the dielectric medium whose permittivity is epsilon. So now I am going to define in terms of the, the charge. So the capacitor is nothing but the, the storage of the, the charge. So it is nothing but the, the ratio of the, the charge to the applied potential. So Q by V. So we know that what is meant by D. So D is nothing but the, the dielectric flux density. Dielectric flux density. So we know the relationship between D and epsilon which is nothing but D is equal to epsilon into capital E. So here we are going to represent D is nothing but the, the uniform charge density. Uniform charge density. It is a ratio of the charge accumulated in the, the capacitor to the, the cross sectional area. So I can also define the dielectric flux density or otherwise known as the uniform charge density. It is nothing but the, the ratio of the, the charge to the, the cross sectional area. So the unit of the, the uniform charge density is nothing but coulombs per meter square. So we know that the relation this I am going to equate second and third equation. So if I am equating second and third then my equation will be expressed in this way Q by A is equal to epsilon into capital E. So where the charge accumulated in the, the normal capacitor is nothing but the the product of the the cross sectional area into its dielectric flux density which is nothing but epsilon into capital E. We know that the electric field is nothing but the applied potential to the, the displacement of the, the channel. So that is nothing but uh, electric field. The electric field unit is nothing but volt per meter. So in this charge equation the E is unknown. So I am going to substitute the value of E in the, the Q equation or otherwise you can substitute in the, the fourth equation. So then the Q will be changed in this way. So A epsilon V by D. So if you see this equation, this equation is directly proportional to the applied potential V and inversely proportional to the, the distance or otherwise the, the channel length. So now we want the, the resultant capacitance of this geometry. So that is C. So we know that what is meant by C. So that we defined in the, the first equation. So which is nothing but Q by V. So I am going to rearrange this equation Q by V. So Q. So take V this side it comes to the denominator so the effective capacitance is nothing but epsilon divided by D 
so the unit of the, the capacitance is nothing but farad so this is nothing but your the designed value of the, the capacitance for this geometry hello and now we are going to see the, the appli applications of the, the capacitor the capacitor is nothing but the, the passive device so we have seen the, the parallel plate capacitor so one is charged with the, the positive charge other one is charged with the, the negative charge so now we see one of the application is nothing but the capacitance of the, the parallel plate capacitor having two dielectric media so in this geometry the two dielectric media will be there which have epsilon r1 and the epsilon r2 so where epsilon r1 and epsilon r2 is nothing but the relative permeability so in this case both medium have the, the equal quantity so once you apply the, the potential for this case uh, consider potential v1 will be applied for the the first parallel plate condition and v2 is nothing but the, the potential applied for the, the second parallel condition so now what is the the assumption is that the uh, distance between the first and the, the second plate will be d1 and displacement between first and the third plate is nothing but d then what is the, the displacement between 2 and 3 is nothing but d minus d1 then what is the total potential applied across this capacitor that is first and third the total potential will be will be expressed in this way that is it is denoted by the symbol the total potential across this two uh, parallel plate capacitor is v is equal to v1 plus v2 so our objective is that we have to calculate the, the capacitance effect of the, the parallel plate capacitor for this two dielectric media so for that we should know about what is meant by e1 and e2 so e1 and e2 is nothing but the the field intensity in the respective medium field intensity in the respective medium now we should know about what is the value of v1 and v2 so we have to relate in terms of the field intensity that is v1 is nothing but e1 the displacement here is d1 so i will write e1 into d1 this is your equation 2 so for the the second medium we should write the, the potential equation v2 is equal to e2 the displacement is nothing but d1 minus d2 so i will write d minus d1 this is your third equation now i am going to substitute the second and the third equation in the, the first equation substitute second and third in first equation then the, the total potential across the, the two parallel capacitor v is equal to e1 into d1 plus e2 into d minus d1 if you see in this equation e1 and e2 are the, the field intensity where e1 and e2 are the unknown term where d1 and d minus d1 is the, the displacement between the the two media 1 and 2 respectively so we have to calculate the value of e1 and e2 for that we should know about what is meant by dielectric flux density or otherwise known as the, the uniform charge density d so which is nothing but the ratio of the, the charge to the, the cross sectional area a where the dielectric flux density will be the same for two media will be same for two media and also know that d is equal to epsilon into capital e so now i am going to equate the the d, d equations so then e1 is equal to d divided by epsilon r1 
so where epsilon r1 is nothing but the the relative permeability of the the medium one similarly e2 is nothing but d divided by epsilon r2 so epsilon r2 is nothing but the, the relative permeability of the the medium two so now we have to substitute the value of the, the relative permeability for first medium and second medium respectively then d is equal to a into sorry we know that d is equal to q by a so then q by a into epsilon naught into epsilon r1 for this case q divided by a divided by epsilon naught into epsilon r2 so this is your fourth equation this is your fifth equation now i am going to substitute the value of e1 and e2 in the, the potential equation so substitute a 4 and 5 in the, the potential v then capital v is equal to so e1 is nothing but q divided by a epsilon naught into r1 into d1 plus e2 is nothing but q divided by a epsilon naught into epsilon r2 into d minus d1 now we are going to do the some simplification in this equation to get the value of the potential so taking the, the common factor from the, the first and the second term so the first term have q divided by a epsilon naught second term also have a divided by q epsilon naught so i am going to take commonly outside q divided by a epsilon naught so then the remaining term is d1 divided by epsilon r1 plus d minus d1 divided by epsilon r2 so this is nothing but your potential equation but our objective is to calculate the value of the, the capacitance so the capacitance c is nothing but q by v so i have to rearrange this equation in this way so taking v this side and remaining term this side then i can get the value of the, the capacitance c So my capacitance equation will be a Q by V which is equal to A epsilon naught whole divided by D1 divided by epsilon R1 plus D minus D1 whole divided by epsilon R2. So taking LCM for this step then you will get the, the result to capacitance like this a epsilon naught epsilon r1 epsilon r2 so where epsilon r1 and epsilon r2 is nothing but the relative permeability which is in the, the numerator so in denominator you will get d1 epsilon r2 plus d minus d1 epsilon r2 so where this term d minus d1 is nothing but the the distance between the second and third uh, dielectric plate so we uh, now we going to put uh, the two uh, one condition if the medium one if medium one is air if medium one is air then the relative permeability for first medium will be 1 epsilon r is nothing but 1 then your medium 2 will be epsilon r 2 will be simply represent as epsilon r then your capacitance will be expressed in this way so this term will be substituted as 1 since we have considered the medium 1 is air so your equation will be changed in this way that is epsilon naught and epsilon naught 2 is being substituted as epsilon r 
the whole divided by d1 epsilon r plus d minus d1 epsilon r so if you see in the, the numerator this entire term is nothing but the permittivity of the, the medium so it is nothing but epsilon naught into epsilon naught. So what is the, the inference of this capacitance equation? The capacitance equation is always directly proportional to the, the cross sectional area A and inversely proportional to the, the relative permeability. So next concept is that the capacitance of an isolated sphere. So what is meant by isolated sphere? So isolated sphere is the one we are going to isolate from any medium in which the geometry here we consider is a sphere. So for that what is the, the equivalent capacitance effect? So consider the, the geometry sphere in which the radii is R. So where small r is nothing but the, the radius. So once I apply the, the potential for this circuit. Potential for this circuit. So it has been induced by the, the EMF. So and also it has been accumulated by some charge Q. So now I am going to consider the term potential. The potential is nothing but the, the work done per unit charge is carrying a charge A. So for, so for, for example if I am considered this is your positive charge it carries the, the charge A to uh, from, the, the, from the test charge to the infinite of the sphere. So then what is the, the potential acquired in the sphere? So that is your capital V. The acquired potential is nothing but so minus integral of infinite to r e into dr so why i am putting integral means since here i have considered geometry is isolated sphere it is a enclosed surface so i have expressed in the integral for expressing the, the potential this is your first equation so we know that the electric field across the any point charge is nothing but q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square so here we having the electric field E. So instead of E I am going to substitute this equation. So that is V is equal to minus integral of infinite to R Q divided by 4 pi epsilon R square into dr. So this is varied by dr. So in the, the integration the except 1 by R square the remaining term will be considered as the, the constant. So I will take it out the remaining terms that is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon integral of infinite to R 1 by R square into dr. So if I am integrating 1 by R square then I will get minus Q divided by 4 pi epsilon minus 1 by R the limit is r to infinite so now apply upper limit minus lower limit so if i am applying upper limit you will get minus 1 by r if i am applying minus inf minus infinity then i will get uh, uh, anything by infinity anything by infinity is nothing but zero so the second part becomes vanished so the potential v is equal to so the value v is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon after performing this integration but our objective is that the capacitance of this isolated sphere so we know that c is equal to q by v so then the equation will be rearranged in this way then we can get the value of the, the capacitance effect of the isolated sphere so then my equation capacitance c is equal to q by v the value is a 4 pi 
epsilon r so where epsilon r is nothing but your relative permeability sorry so where r is nothing but the, the radii so the unit of the the capacitance is nothing but farad if the medium is air if the medium is air then the epsilon value should be replaced by epsilon not where epsilon not is nothing but permeability of the the free space then the capacitance effect will be 4 pi epsilon not into r this is the the resultant capacitance of the isolated sphere the next thing is that the capacitance of the, the spherical capacitor so we should know the, the difference between isolated sphere and the, the uh, uh, spherical capacitor in previous case we have seen the isolated sphere which uh, which how it will be look like one globe having a radii of r so after applying the, the potential v we will getting a accumulated charge q so this is the, the difference of this geometry whereas for the spherical capacitor there have the inner uh, sphere and outer sphere the inner sphere is accumulated by positive charge and outer sphere is accumulated by the, the negative charge in which it have the, the permeability of epsilon so this is uh, here it is having the hollow graph the shaded portion is nothing but hollow space The inner radii is nothing but A and outer radii is nothing but B. Inner radii A and outer radii B. So what is our objective? So we have to calculate the, the spherical capacitor effect in which we know that what is the uh, electric field acquired for the, the single point charge. So we know that the electric field acquired for the, the single point charge which is nothing but E is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square so why epsilon has been denoted so here there is no r gap so here you having some media so it may be a uh, some dielectric effect or it may be a some metallic surface the unit of the electric field is nothing but volt per meter now i have considered the ra range of the, the radii range of the radii r it's from b to a so b is nothing but your larger radii and a is nothing but your smaller radii so it will be ranges to b to a then what is the, the potential so we know that the potential v is nothing but minus integral of e into dr so we have to write the the lower limit and upper limit so uh, lower limit is nothing but b and upper limit is nothing but a so we know the value of e so substitute the value of e here that is integral of b by a q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square into dr so inside the integral dr is nothing but your variable term so we have to take the except remaining term of r we have to take it out that are will be considered as constant that is minus q divided by 4 pi epsilon integral of b by a 1 by r square into dr so if i am integrating 1 by r square i will get Q divided by 4 pi epsilon 1 by r minus 1 by r the limit is a to b so apply upper limit minus lower limit that is minus q divided by 4 pi epsilon so upper limit is a that is minus 1 by a minus of minus becomes plus that is 1 by plus 1 by b so my resultant equation will be change in this way so apply minus inside then q divided by 4 pi epsilon 1 by a 
minus 1 by b so this is nothing but your effective potential across the, the spherical capacitor but our objective is that to calculate the, the capacitance which is nothing but q by v so we have to rearrange this equation to get the, the capacitance effect of the spherical capacitor so i will rearrange this equation that is c is equal to q by v then the, the resultant equation will be a 4 pi epsilon whole divided by 1 minus a by 1 minus b so this is nothing but your the capacitance effect of the spherical capacitor the last one is that the capacitance of the, the coaxial cable or else we can simply call as the, the cylinder the capacitance of a coaxial cable or otherwise known as the a cylinder so let us consider the the geometry so which have the, the cylinder so first of all we know about what is meant by the cylinder the cylinder have opening space having a circular and which have the, the linear element so i am going to consider this cross sectional area for analyzing the value of capacitance effect for this portion okay so it have the inner annular ring and outer annular ring very thin so consider the inner annular ring having a radii of a and outer annular ring having a radii of b that is almost look like the, the spherical capacitance or concentric sphere but it is very thin where a value and b value is very thin i am considering the middle portion somewhere it is your differential radii so i will consider as r so what is the the charge density for this surface area the charge density for this surface area is nothing but a rho l so here also our objective is that to calculate the value of the effective capacitance so let us consider the rho l is nothing but the, the surface charge density so rho l is nothing but a surface charge density so why in this case we are using the, the surface charge density so it is nothing but your surface element which have the, the two axial coordinates that is x and y alone whereas in the, the previous case it may be a volume or the, the line element if it is the, the line element then we have to express only one coordinate axis if it is the, the uh, volume then we have to have the, the three coordinate axis x y z so whereas here it is the, the surface area so what only we are considering instead of charge q as rho l it is nothing but your surface charge density so then what is the the electric field induced in this capacitance that is e is equal to rho l divided by 2 pi epsilon r whereas in the, the previous case we have put q in the, the numerator whereas in this case we are used rho l since it is the, the surface area so next we have to calculate the, the potential induced in this geometry that is v is equal to minus integral of e into dr then what is the the range of the, the radial distance r so i am going to consider the range is nothing but a to b so my limit goes to higher limit is a and lower limit is b so substitute the value of e here minus integral of a to b rho l whole divided by 2 pi epsilon r into dr so treat r is the, the function in the integration so remaining will be the constant minus rho l divided by 2 pi epsilon integral of a to b 1 by r so we know the integration of this integral of 1 by r is nothing but ln r 
So apply the, the integration that is minus rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon. So it is nothing but ln R. The limit is A to B. Apply upper limit minus lower limit. That is minus rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon. Ln A minus ln B. Or otherwise I will simply write it as minus rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon ln A by B. If I am apply minus inside then my equation will change in this way. Rho L divided by 2 pi epsilon ln B by A. So it will get reciprocal. So this is nothing but your total potential induced in this geometry. But our objective is that to find the, the capacitance of C which is nothing but rho L divided by V. So where this is nothing but the, the charge in two dimensional quantity. So what only we are representing the, the symbol rho L. So denominator value is nothing but your potential. So if you reciprocal this equation or rearrange this equation then we will get the, the capacitance effect. So that is, so C is equal to rho L by V which is nothing but 2 pi R the whole divided by ln B by A. If you see this equation, what is the, the inference of this? The inference design of this capacitance is nothing but the capacitance is always proportional to the, the radii and inversely proportional to the the concentric radii these are the this is a is nothing but the the inner radii and b is nothing but your outer radii so this is your capacitance design for the cylindrical coordinate system the unit for the capacitance is nothing but farad so denominator having radii so i will write farad per meter so with this i will wind up the capacitance concept 